let's go for our first game with a Charizard deck against Leon's Charizard. I think they're playing Altaria and Chinchino, so uh, two different supports, but you know, I don't think they're playing that many copies. So probably like only two copies of Chinchino, two copies of Altaria. Uh, two different support is quite interesting though, because you rarely see that in a Charizard deck. Normally they only play like uh, one, four line of Chinchino or four line of Altaria, um, or even Mew. But this time, I th uh, this this deck is actually playing quite a, a lot of different mix. Quite a uh, fun mix of different cards with the Charizard deck. And there's going to be a Charizard V-Star in the next set. Quite excited with that card, because there's so many different cards to charge up your Fire decks now. Fire decks is going to be amazing, because you have Magma Basin, you have Kindler, you have so, so many different cards to uh, support you. You know, Kindler allows you to search, your, search the top 7 cards of your deck. For any 2 cards, put it, put it into your hand, and you get to discard a Fire Energy from your hand as well. So discarding a Fire Energy allows you to use Magma Basin. Uh, because Magma Basin only allows you to attach to your Fire Pokemon on your bench from your discard pile and energy card of Fire Energy. So it's very very constricted, it's very very confined because it only allows you to attach to Fire Pokemon on your bench and from your discard pile. So that's triple, there's a triple chain going on right there. Very 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 confined. Um, as are the new cards, so many rules now. But it's making the game more interesting because um, you know the more confined it is, the more uh, the more of a challenge it is for you to find ways to get out of the box, to think out of the box, and kind of fight through the chains, fight through the prison that they actually set for you. It's kind of like a prison because they are making the game so tight now. Only meta decks get to win, but I'm trying to fight against that. I'm trying to make decks that are non-meta with mustard grim snarl different kind of flavors, different decks. Uh, they are playing quite a different flavor as well. Chinchino, Mew, and Altaria. Three different supports. Uh, they got Raihan, Experience for the Energies. They got Oranguru. Oranguru, Altaria, and Chinchino. You don't need Oranguru though. If you're playing Battle Sense, you just need to kind of Altaria and Battle Sense to discard your Leon. But Oranguru helps you get your research. So they may just play a research instead of battle sense because you can't use the ability until you evolve right um, so they didn't play the supporter card I don't think we got to scoop it up I'm not sure if I evolved here because evolving doesn't allow me to do a knockout uh, if we evolve right now we can't do a knockout if we research we can't we may be able to do a rare candy so I'm not sure if I do a research uh, we have a shopping mall for this deck so this is not the finalized list we have shopping mall we have no Raihan. So Shopping Mall is a very good card because it allows you to save your tool card. If you want to use your Mustard or your, if you are using your Research, you may have to discard your tool cards in your hand before you are able to play your Mustard. So playing a Shopping Mall allows you to attach to your Bench, to attach to your Meowth even, uh, before using that Mustard and then basically retrieve it later with your Shopping Mall and then reattach it to your Bench Grim Snarl. So that's a very very good card, it's a very nifty card to be playing because it adds that dimension, that extra dimension to your deck. So Shopping Mall is Shopping Center, my bad. Shopping Center is a very good card definitely for this deck, but I prefer just to have more um, experience share because I don't know why, but it actually works better having more ex uh, experience share because if, it, if, if you get your Shopping Center too early and if you don't get your experience share, you can't actually do much, you know? You have to attach experience share uh, immediately after benching your Grim Snarl, and if you don't get it at the right time, playing only three copies, we have to fit in. You know, we can't actually fit in a shopping mall anymore. If we fit in a shopping center, we're gonna have to play like two copies, and that's not enough. That's just not enough. I would rather play more copies of experience share, and we need the other cards. You know, we need. Our supporter cards, everything, the ratio is already perfectly balanced. So I would say uh, scrap that shopping center for another experience share. Because the finalized list, I'm gonna link your I'm gonna link you guys to the video in the description. Uh, the video link is gonna be the original video, which is the Grim Snarl Mustard. The very first the first part, part one of this video. So the part one is gonna have the deck list, the finalized version. So if you want to refer to the deck list, go to the link in the description below and you'll find video one 
uh, video one is going to be uh, quite different gameplays. There's going to be the deck review as well, and we're going to have the full list there. So check out video one. We have a rare candy. We have mustard. We have no grim snarl yet. We have the Charizard already, so we better be playing our mustard right now. If we don't, we're done for. Okay, we have to discard a rare candy, but that's fine. I think we only have three rare candies now because we have a shopping center in this deck. I'm not sure what we swapped for, but we have no Raihan though. Yeah, we have no Raihan, so I think we have four rare candies. Okay, we got the rare candy, we got a Grim Snarl, we got double summon right now, which is great. That's what we want to be accomplishing, and we got a uh, Morgrem as well, Morgrem with the level ball, which is perfect. We got triple evolution this turn. Um, Oh, we can't evolve, because we actually benched that this turn. My bad. We should have changed the... We should have moved that experience share to the other Grim Snarl. Because it's safer that way. We should have scooped up the experience share and attached it to the other one. So they can attack, finally. With Charizard, they're evolving the second one. They got Altaria in there. They got Altar in the field, and Oranguru knew everything is in the field, they just need one copy though. If you boss are to knock out anything, they're done, right? So playing one copy is not too safe. But I think they just need like, they just need the first ability, they just need to use the ability the first time. And then if you boss are to knock it out, they just need their Chinchina to draw, right? And Battle Sense to discard, so they just really need the first, the first hit the first uh, activation of the ability. If they get to do it the first time, they don't have to worry about the knockout. So it's quite interesting. It's not working too badly, as you can see. They've got two stage two already, but we're getting our third one the next turn. Um, well, not really, because we have, uh, I forgot we actually haven't evolved more Gram. So we're getting our third one quite late, but we can actually do a uh, Charizard knockout if they don't boss order us. If they boss order us, I don't know what to do, but we may be able to attack with the Grim Snarl. There we go, they didn't use a boss order, that's great. So we're doing our rare attack, Charizard knockout this turn, that's great. We get to use Bruno as well, we're evolving. And we have to make sure not to bench that, because we have to keep our bench small to be able to add extra damage with that attack. So we cannot pull out another, we can't do anything. We can't do anything else except attaching that screen share. Because if we bench any more Impidims or a Meowth, we're gonna be done. We can't do extra damage. We need 240 to knock it out. So we knocked it out, it got experience share. And we got a rod, look at that. Rod is super helpful because it shuffles it back into your deck and it works really well with mustard. Because mustard needs, uh, mustard, you, you need to have your Grim Snarl inside your deck to be able to play your mustard. Uh, if it's in your discard pile inside your hand, you can't use it. So it's quite different from your Rapid Strike mustard. Rapid Strike needs it to be inside the discard pile. So if it gets knocked out, you don't need to shuffle it back. But you have to, for the first summon, you need to discard it, you need to uh, bring it into your hand and then quick ball discard it. Or somehow use a Professor Burnett or something to discard your... Rapid Strike Pokemon from your deck, from inside your deck. So the first one is going to be quite difficult to summon, but after the after a few knockouts, you don't need to do anything else. You don't need to rot them back, you don't, you don't need to summon it into your hand. You just need to play the Mustard, because it's already inside your discard pile. Uh, single Strike is a bit more tricky, because you need to shuffle it back with a rod, you need to play the rod at the right time. Uh, you need to put it back into your deck if it's inside your hand. You have to put it inside your deck with a Marnie or Oranguru switching cups. So it's quite tricky. It's a bit more tricky than the Rapid Strike one. But it's faster though. If you can pull out a Single Strike Master early, then it, you can actually do it faster. And all you need to do is play 4 copies for you to be able to do it. 4 copies of Mustard and you can do it quite easy, quite early. Very fast in the game. So we got... Uh, our third Grim Snarl the next turn, and here comes another Charizard on the bench. We got Experience Share ready to go, we got 10 cards left in the deck. They played their Rod, 
And I'm not sure if they discarded it or they played it. I, I don't know. Do they have enough Leons? Probably. There we go. Three Leons in the discard pile. Uh, we got experience share on the Goku Snow, probably. Snow. Yep. And we got five prize cards left. So we need to roll back uh, the Green Snow. We are benching a Meowth so that we get to play Mustard because we have a lot more Musters in the deck. So we're shuffling back two Green Snows. But we only have one though. That's bad. So the other one is in the prize card. So we're saving one in the discard pile. I'm not sure why because we don't have Raihan in this deck. So I'm not sure why we're saving that. Um, I think just to help us draw other cards because we want to be drawing out the other cards. We want to be drawing out the mustard. So if we shuffle back too many energies, we might get them back into our hand. So we want to be playing Marnie right now. Marnie, Quick Ball, basically getting out all the cards, all the unnecessary cards. So that we get to draw our mustards with the Marnie and then play the mustard on the next turn. We do have three more copies though, three more mustards in the deck, and we finally draw one, uh, our other mustard. We got a rare candy, but that's not going to help anymore, because we don't have any more impidims. <clears throat> no more impidims on the bench. So we have to discard right now, because we can't actually bench that many meow. So we have to discard right now to prepare for the next mustard. Because we have to, we are drawing a card from the top deck and the prize with this knockout. So we are drawing two extra cards by our next turn. So we have to be very, very careful. And we just scooped up the tool card. So we can attach it to the Meowth later, so we don't need to discard it. Okay, that's an item, which is great. We don't need to discard that. We may have to discard the single strike energy because we want to be attaching after using the mustard. Attaching after the mustard allows you to basically charge up your next Grim Snarl, preparing it for a tool scrapper because experience share is not gonna help if they use a tool scrapper. It's better to attach after the mustard. If you use experience share after the mustard, you're gonna have to rely on them not pulling their tool uh, not pulling the tool scrapper on you, because if they do that you're done. So they got, they need another Charizard, they need uh, another bench Charmander, experience share as well. Oh, I think they haven't attached their energy yet, so they just need a Charmander energy. And a Charizard, obviously. I think they ran out of their rare candies. So <laughs> they need rare candy and a stage 1. For us, we just need rare candy and mustard. We even have Mogram, one Mogram in this deck, so we have three different paths of evolution. Three different routes to evolve to the stage two to get our Grim Snarl out. Just because we get to play Mustard, this deck is so much better than any other stage two decks. So we have three triple summons, triple uh, strategy to summon our stage two card, which is quite rare. And they're waiting. I don't know what's happening. Um, I think they're thinking. You need to think a lot with this game. You have to think a lot, especially at the late stage of the game. You can't just, you can't be rash. You know, you have to think, think it through every single, every step of the way. You cannot just, you can't do, you can't do nothing. So I think we are summoning a mustard right now. We are using the mustard because if we don't, uh, we don't actually need to do that much damage to knock out the Chinchino. If we have a boss order though, that would be great. But we don't have it. Attaching would not be a good idea because. Um, yeah, it's, it's just not a good idea. But we have experience share though, and they gave us that extra one turn, so we can actually attach it the next turn. We have uh, another Grim Snarl on the bench. We have two Grim Snarls ready to go, so we don't really need to worry about the energy attachment. We just need to play the mustard right now, get another one going, so that we get to. We can't even knock it out though, we don't need 240, we just need 100 damage. So I was being super careful there because I could have attached the single strike to the active, 
but I decided to attach to the bench because the active is probably going to get knocked out and attaching to the bench allows you to protect it from a fan of waves because if they use a fan of waves and a crushing hammer then you're down to zero energy well they need a tool scrapper as well so they need uh, two, three cards and a head which is quite impossible and we got the scoop up then so we get to do 240 damage um, we don't wait we don't need to wait for a knockout we don't need to wait for charizard to knock it out and we got our third prize card uh they have four prize cards left so we're a bit faster we're hit by a little bit okay we got a boss order as well waiting in the wings Spirit share and another energy in our hand, which is great. We got four Leons already, so that's 300 damage, a lot of damage. It's not enough to knock out a VMAX though. We need 20 more damage for a VMAX knockout. So maybe like a Elder Goss V? Um, or like a cross receiver to get back your Leon. Play it. If you play a Leon on your turn, you get to do 330 damage, which is enough to knock out any VMAX. Um, except Eternatus, of course. Uh, Copper Raja is actually 340 as well, but it's a metal type. Uh, you can actually play Coating Energy. Coating is not that good though, because your opponent can just fan of waves and destroy that. Uh, Dance Sparse is actually better. It protects for that turn, at least it protects you for one turn. Your opponent has to knock it out or somehow remove that remove that Pokemon from your bench to be able to reactivate your weakness. So the only way is to knock it out really. Because there's no way to scoop up, remove that from the bench. Um, unless they play an Avery and unless you have like Avery allows you or uh, uh, allows your opponent to choose as well, so Avery is not gonna help. So Dance Bars gives you that extra one turn. Of weakness defense and one turn is all it takes sometimes and we got battle sense no Charmander yet are they gonna play a Charmander they have to play Charmander we got three grim snarls now um, we get to do two knockouts so the last one is gonna be a bit tricky but they got no Charmander so we won the game because they gave us that last knockout the last knockout is easy now So we don't need the third one, we just need the second Grims now. We're gonna play the other one of course, like why did I choose to put that? Because we have experience share, we should be playing the high energy one. Just in case they crushing hammer, because we have no more hiding I don't think. So we can't even play a mustard, but I don't think we have any more Grims now inside the deck, it's in the prize card. The last one is inside the prize. We can't play a scoop on that though. We can't play a scoop on that because we're gonna remove... We actually summon the bench from Snarl with the mustard, so if we scoop it up, we can't evolve it. We can't put it back onto the bench either, so we can't play a mustard if we use a scoop on that. So they have no Charmander, they're done, they can't evolve. Uh, giving us that extra one turn is all it takes. We got one knockout, one free knockout the next turn, and then all we need is another Charizard knockout the next next turn, and then we win the game. So they're done, they can't, it's not possible anymore. Unless they can knock us out without a Charizard, if they do like a Wap Down knockout, with a powerful energy and a Leon or something, it's not even enough. So they need like another alternate attacker. Incense, they got one card left in the deck. Only uh, they got two rods in the discard pile, so I don't think they can win that easily. No Charmanders yet. And they conceded. So we won against Charizard, another stage two deck, which is quite cool. So let's go for the next one. Against M Jr. He looks rich. He looks like a rich kid. 
because he got the fancy jacket, fancy cap, fancy avatar, which looks expensive. No way am I ever gonna waste my money on avatars. Like, who, who would, who would waste their money on avatars unless they have like excess money to spend? I don't have excess money. I'm not a rich kid. I don't have excess money. I don't like money doesn't grow on trees for me. So we actually have a lot of impotence, uh, a different type of impotence for this deck, which is uh, a nice variety to have. But the final list, I prefer to have four copies of the single strike one. Because if you have four single strike impidim, you can actually attach your single strike energy early before evolving with a rare candy. So it's smart. It's just smarter to play four copies of the single strike one. If you have the regular impidim, it's not going to do anything. Uh, you can attack with 10 damage. You can do 10 damage early, but that's all you can do. You can't do anything else. Um, the other one does 10 damage for one energy as well. So you get to flip a coin. If you flip a heads, so you get to do 40 damage with play rough. The single strike impidim. So it's smarter just to play four copies of that. Because this one doesn't do anything. <laughs> So they got Eternatus out. I'm getting another basic. Probat probably another Eternatus, okay. Power accelerator. They're gonna attach energy, another one. So this is quite bad. We got two energies now. Power accelerator. And we get to sweep it up, recover the damage. I think we're evolving. It's smarter to just evolve right now because rare candy doesn't come by easily. Marnie is definitely not gonna get us rare candy. It's so difficult to get rare candy and incense, even with the research, let alone a Marnie. We're not gonna get that Marnie. So we're gonna do quick ball. Uh, we're gonna scoop it up because we can actually retreat with the hiding energy. That's the good thing about hiding. So we got scoop on that. If only that was a mustard, right? If only that was a mustard. So I actually sacrificed the Impidim. Because the other one is good to go. If we have... We got a rare candy but no incense. If we have a Grim Snarl and an energy the next turn, we can actually attack already. But they can still use a boss order, but we use a Marty on them. So let's hope they don't have a boss order evolution and energy. They need to pull off a lot of things. But they can still play that score card, so... Um, let's not get too hopeful. So we're discarding early because we want to be preparing for mustard. So we have to stay one step ahead all the time. Make sure you think ahead uh, for your mustard card because you can't play that many meow. as I said. You can only bench one meow. So you have to discard every turn if you can. Um, unless you have a lot of item cards, then you don't need to discard. If they play a Marnie though, you can't actually do anything. So preparing may not be a good idea sometimes because they can pull a Marnie at any second. At any point in the game, they can do a Marnie. A Peonia. Very interesting. Peonia for an Eternatus. I don't think I've ever seen that before. Um, but you actually get to play... You get, you get to search your prize card for a VMAX. So if you get too many VMAX stuck in your prize card, Peonia can actually save you. We've got experience share for the bench. Um, Doing a research, but we can actually gear for a uh, mustard, and we got a mustard, so we're playing a mustard this turn. Uh, we don't have a Poke Gear in the finalized list as well, but um, this one we have a Poke Gear. So this is a bit different. The list is a bit different from the original one. Um, okay, we got a Grim Snarl. We got four copies in the deck, which is great. So we get to evolve again. And we're going to attach it to the other Grim Snarl, probably. Because that's smarter. If they boss order one or the other, we got one energy safe. And if they boss order the other one, we can actually use Experience Share to retrieve the energy. So they have to kill the Hiding Energy one. It's smarter just to kill the Hiding Energy. But they got a Sonya instead. Sonya for an energy card, which is quite weak. They're playing uh, quite useless supporter cards. <laughs> Sonia and um, Peonia, which is quite weird. 
or Eternatus deck. Usually Eternatus is good for, is good with, it works well with your Adventures Discovery, um, a lot of Crobats obviously, and I'm not sure what other support cards, Research probably. So we knocked it out before they evolve, which is great. Got two price cards early. I can even boss order the Crobat and collect extra two price cards. We should be saving it for the Moltres though, because if we can knock out um, the Moltres and a VMAX, then we can actually win the game. So we just need uh, one. We just need to kill the VMAX and a one price card. Here comes the VMAX. If they attack this turn, we don't need to use a boss order yet. Okay, I think we're gonna use boss order for the VMAX. We have to target a VMAX early. We have to use boss order right now. We cannot wait a single turn. Because they're gonna bring out another Eternatus. If they bring out another Eternatus, we're done. We have to do it this turn. So we got lucky with the boss order. Because we only have one copy in this deck and it showed up at just the right time. And we get to do 240 damage early on the Eternus. And they are only good for one hit. They can only do one strike with the VMAX. They can't attack with anything else. So that's the good thing. Um, we actually trapped them with a boss on them. And we got another energy on the other one, which is great. If only we have a rare candy. So we're gonna research right now. We're gonna research and draw three price cards. We got no more gram. We already evolved a more gram. And we got no rare candies, which kind of sucks. We're gonna use the mustard. Oh, we we need to rod back. We need to play the rod because mustard is not gonna get us any more green snarls. So we need to somehow get the rod out because we just drew. <laughs> That's the tricky thing about mustard. Single strike. Uh, if you have it in your hand, you can't use it to summon. So you need like Oranguru or Switching Cups to put it back inside your deck. But Oranguru is another bench spot, so you can't actually bench too many things. So that's why we don't have Oranguru Prime Wisdom. We don't get to play that. We absolutely can't play that. So we're benching the Impidim instead because we can actually pull a um, support card with the 3 price draw. Very likely to get a support card, right? Uh, and somehow get a rare candy with a support card and an incense. We got two more incense, so it's not good. it's not too unlikely. We have 17 cards left in the deck, so if we, even if we get a Marty, we can still uh, you know gamble on gamble on playing the supporter to get a rare candy and incense. We should be getting a rare candy though. Like we haven't got a single copy yet, I don't think. So they're knocking us out right now with the uh, Moltres. If we don't get an evolution the next turn, we're done. We got four price cards left though, so we get to delay a bit further. We got a few turns delay. But I think we did a rare candy evolution right now. I think we top deck a rare candy because we haven't even played a rare candy yet. It's quite ridiculous that we haven't got one. We should be getting one by now. But we only draw 5 cards though, we only get to draw 5 cards with Marty and Mustard, so that's probably the reason why. That's why I have 4 research now, that's why I changed the list to have 4 research, because you only get to draw 5 cards with Mustards, and that's not enough, that's just not enough. You need to draw a lot of cards. And we finally got the rare candy, and we did the final knockout, well played, good game. And knocking out the Moltres for the last prize, we won against Eternatus. That was a satisfying win against a meta deck, really really happy.